If you want to be a data analyst, you need to have at least a basic understanding of business. In this video, I'll teach you about five business terms that you should know. Being a data analyst isn't just about writing code and building charts. You also need to have some business knowledge to apply your technical skills to the business. To help you get started, I'm going to talk about five business terms that I've used and heard a lot during my years as a data analyst. These terms aren't anything crazy, but they go a little bit beyond revenue and profit. However, if you would like me to make a simple video explaining more simple business concepts like these, feel free to drop a comment. Alright, the first term is ROI, which stands for Return on Investment. This is basically what you get compared to what you give. For example, if we invest in something, this is the money that we make as a result of that investment. For example, let's say that a restaurant buys a new ice cream machine to hopefully make better ice cream and sell more ice cream. This ice cream machine costs $3,000. After we run the numbers over the course of a year, we can see that we've sold $2,000 more in ice cream. Therefore, you could say that our return on investment or ROI is $2,000. This could be good or bad based on many different factors, including how long the ice cream machine might last, maintenance costs, labor costs, but this is a very basic start to calculating ROI. The second term that we're going to talk about is KPI, which stands for Key Performance Indicator. KPIs are basically a small number of metrics that businesses use to measure the success of the business as a whole or just a small part of the business. For this example, our business is a YouTube channel, and we want two to three metrics to measure the success of our videos. Three common metrics that a lot of YouTubers use are views, click-through rate, which is basically the number of people that click on a video when they see it on YouTube divided by the number of people that see it, and average duration viewed. With these three metrics, you can not only determine the success of a video as a whole, but you can also diagnose issues. For example, if our click-through rate is not very good, that might mean we need a better topic, we might need a better title, or we might need a better thumbnail. The key with selecting KPIs is you don't want to select too many or too few. If you select 10 KPIs, you're going to create way too much noise to derive any real insight, and if you only choose one KPI, that's not really enough to tell you the whole picture. The third term we're going to discuss today is CAC, or Customer Acquisition Cost. This is the cost it takes for our business to acquire a new customer. Let's say that we work for the social management team of a business and we invest money to run Facebook ads to bring in more customers. At the end of the campaign, we can see that we spent $1,000 to bring in 100 new customers. All we have to do is divide the $1,000 divided by the 100 customers, and that gives us a customer acquisition cost of $10 per customer. Something to keep in mind here is determining the customer acquisition cost is not always straightforward. For example, we might only be able to collect data on customers that click the link on Facebook, but some people might open up Google on their phone and find us that way. Therefore, we might have actually gotten more customers and therefore have a lower customer acquisition cost. However, no measurement is perfect, so when measuring something like customer acquisition cost, all you can do is your best and always be thinking of better ways to measure. The fourth term we'll talk about is LTV or lifetime value. This term represents the total projected money a customer will spend with our business during the entirety of their relationship with our business. For this example, we are a chiropractor and we just ran a social media campaign that yielded a customer acquisition cost of $100 per customer. This may seem like a lot at first, but we happen to find out that our average customer spends over $2,000 with us during the entirety of our relationship. Therefore, $100 of an acquisition cost doesn't sound that bad. This calculation is super helpful to provide context like in the previous example, but it's really important to remember that revenue does not equal profit. So you always want to keep things like profit margin at the top of your mind when doing this sort of calculation. Finally, our fifth term is churn rate. This is the percentage of customers that stop using your business over any given period of time. For this example, we own a data analytics course company that primarily sells monthly subscriptions. Last month, out of 1,000 customers, 20 of them left our business. So if you divide the 20 that left divided by the 1,000 total customers, you'll get a churn rate of 2%. 
Therefore, we want to make sure we're bringing in more customers than we are losing, so that way our business is growing rather than shrinking. While this term is most often used when referring to customers like in the previous example, some companies may also use this term to talk about employees that leave the company. Anyway, I hope this video helps. If you have any other business topics that you think it would be helpful for me to cover, please drop a comment below and I will check that out. And if you want to be a data analyst, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I post a brand new video every single week helping you become the best data analyst that you can be. And with that, I'll see you next week.